Thanks so much, guys. Our next presenter, Tim Arnold, is a University of Central Florida marketing senior and self-described innovator and disruptor. Tim is a former FIRST Robotics team member who credits the program for shaping him, building his tech interests, and inspiring him to think innovatively. Tim made headlines this past summer after a controversy developed with the university over a registration enhancement web service that he created called You Could Finish. Please welcome Tim Arnold. I'm going to start with a simple question. How many of you out here have dreams today? Big dreams, small dreams, goals. How many of you have been told no? I want to tell you about a man 93 years ago who was told no to his dream. He was employed in Kansas City, very excited to have his first job in the artist industry. He was working at a commercial artist studio. He was working on graphics, um, for commercial publications such as this. And this man, he was told that by his manager that he just wasn't particularly um, ins inspirational. He, he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Now this man was, was troubled because he got fired for this. He got let go because his manager felt that he had no imagination. Well, this man, I believe you've all heard of, this man is Walt Disney. So, while Disney went on from that also, and he, he actually went bankrupt, he ran two companies into the ground, and we all know today where Walt Disney stands. So failure is not an end to your dream. Failure is just a stepping stone to find your success. And I want to share with you, um, this, this past year, well, let me start in the beginning. Four years ago, when I came to the University of Central Florida, I walked into the campus for my orientation session, as all new students do. And there's about a thousand students at a time that go through the orientation process. You walk into the school, massive, big buildings, things you've never seen before in your life, and you're brought in, and the, the fear to me wasn't how many students there was, it was this reputation that UCF had of you can't finish. And the reason for that is because it's difficult to get the courses you actually need to graduate. To line them all up in the sequence that you need can be difficult to find. I had no issues with that during my orientation. But as the years went on, I started to discover that this was a more commonplace issue. I had difficulties myself finding courses, and it really hit me when I was an orientation team leader at the campus. There's 31 of us, and we help guide students through their, their process of joining the university and welcoming them to the school. And traditional students that were coming in, they, they were having so much you know, tr pr problems finding the classes they need. For example, nursing students, they had to have biology to begin their coursework. If they didn't get biology, their entire schooling would be delayed by an entire year. So this is a pretty significant thing. And even worse with the non-traditional students, these students that were transferred from other schools, that had families, that had to put food on the table and keep the roof over their heads, they, just, they were brought to tears if they couldn't get the right courses that they need. And the process that we go through at the school is we, we, we sit down in this computer lab and we log into this website called My UCF, and you search for the classes you need and there's a number that says how many seats are available in the class. Now when that number hits zero, you're, you can't get in. You're, that's it. That's just the fact of life. And the only thing we can tell students as orientation team leaders is to just keep checking. Keep going on My UCF. Hopefully someone will drop it. Hopefully it'll become available. And that made both them and me feel helpless. I, I really wish I could have helped them more. So I started to think, what can we do? Why, why can we only tell them to go and check my UCF? There's gotta be a better way. And so while I couldn't hire more teachers, I couldn't create more classroom buildings, I realized that there was an opportunity to take that pain out of the process by just simply letting people know once a course is available. So my system that I developed I didn't actually know how to program the type of language I needed to do this. I actually went on the internet, as you know, there's everything on the internet, and hired someone to create a, a web service that would go out and check how many seats are available in a course. I got a few friends on that this past spring and saw some great success. I and mean, I only had like 15 people on there and three people got in the classes they need, saving them hundreds of dollars if they had to been delayed to get in those classes. And from there I knew I had something. I knew that this was going to help people. 
So I learned how the software worked, and I created a whole system called You Could Finish. Now again, this website's very simple. All it does is just send you a text. But over in the seven days that it was online, we had over 500 users come to the site and search for their courses. So clearly there was a need for this type of system. However, UCF, as, as things grew, they didn't feel the same way. Our IT department believed that my service, as it was an outside service, had the potential to overrun UCF servers. They promptly shut it down without uh, any communication to me and left me in the dark of wondering what happened. This was helping so many people, why, why shut it down? And it was just quite a, a moment because then I found out I was sent to student conduct. As I tried to find out more information about why, what was going on, I was sent to the university's student conduct board and told that I was gonna be on probation, I had to write research papers, that I was being punished for trying to help students. But that's not the end of the story. It was only beginning. From there, the story grew. It found its way into news outlets organically. It grew on and on from local news networks to nationwide news networks sharing the story of how one person can make a difference in a large university campus. As before I started the, the pro project, I had some friends validate the site, including SGA president, and he still stood behind me to this day saying, I believe what he did is brilliant. The point of this is that not you need to have people that believe in your service, it's that you have to have the right people on board. If your dream interferes with someone else's dream, you have issues if they're not willing, you know, if you don't work ahead, ahead of time on it. But from here, I've, I've grown. I've gotten a lot of great opportunities. I was reached out for, to from everyone, from uh, companies looking for talented individuals to someone that was working on a, a rocket to the, the moon for the Google X Prize. Like, just phenomenal people reaching out and supporting my, what would happen. So my point to you all today is just that six, Failure, it, it's, not, it's not the end. It's not the end of your dream. It's merely success in disguise. So don't let it hold you back. And I have one quote here from, from Walt again. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So learn from Walt. <clears throat> he went bankrupt. He had all this, these problems, and obviously we all know who he is today. So pursue your dreams and keep pushing. Thank you.